In this demo uh, will show you the value of an input box. Again, uh, I have put a button on the screen and, as, and uh, I'm going to attach a script to it. Uh, I've opened up its particular um, uh, object and I'm writing the script on the click event of that object. First off, I need to dim a particular uh, data type uh, as a string. Uh, the input box will return a data type of a string. Uh, literally I'm now going to say that that data type will equal the outcome of the uh, input box and in this case you will see a number of uh, return values that come from the input box firstly just simply a, uh, a query saying uh, insert your text and as you note when I click OK uh, my data type of a string returns the value of the text from the box, from the input box. Uh, now we're going to butter this up a bit by uh, adding a, an appropriate title to the input box. And you can see now we now have a title to the input box. Again, you can see the outcome of the text. And uh, sometimes to give a bit of uh, user input, we will actually put in a default uh, result uh, that will be returned if the OK button is clicked. As you can see, that default text came in the return. Uh, and lastly, I uh, don't like the position of the input box on the screen currently. It's a bit annoying, so I'm going to move that uh, to a better position on the screen. As you can see now, it's come further down the screen based on my coordinates. Uh, now, we want the input box to actually do something. So I've put a text field also on the screen, and what I'm going to do is reference that particular object uh, take the result of the input box and actually put the result into that text field on the screen. Um, in referencing you don't need to, when you're working on the screen, you don't need to actually refer to its entire name. You can shortcut it by having the parentheses surrounding the, uh, the actual name of the field uh, and then saying it equals a particular outcome. It's text property in this case. So here we go, uh, we're going to click on the input box, uh, we've got our demo default text, I've got an error here which relates to uh, the fact that I can't run this from this position. I had to change the actual uh, reference on the field name, I've now got it right and you'll see that the field contents were changed to the outcome of the input box. Now. In a lot of cases, uh, you want uh, a little bit different. You want the field to be filled with something uh, meaningful. Uh, in this case, we're going to fill this particular field with an email. We'll change our uh, obviously our input box. Uh, give a bit of a prompt to the user, and uh, let's see what our next outcome will be. OK, so what we've done, I'll just type in a bit of gobbledygook and you see the box is now filled. Now in this case, because it's an email, we know that that email is really invalid. So we're going to do a bit of filtering of this particular uh, outcome to ensure that we actually get a, an email as close as possible to a real email into that box. And in this case, I'm going to use the instring function or the instring keyword, which actually searches the text of my result. Uh, and looks for, for something specific in there and if it's not there well basically it's going to tell me I have an invalid entry. As you can see I'm looking all emails have the at symbol uh, so here it is it's looking for that particular at symbol and it's going to tell me um, if it's not there then I have an invalid email to try again. Uh, and I use a previous uh, thing of the message box to assist me in the process. As you can see, 
didn't like what I put in there. It's told me it doesn't like it, so it says OK. And in this case, I put an end keyword in, which meant that it, the whole function ended before it went to the next line. Now I'll type in an appropriate email, and we'll see what happens. As you can see, it was accepted by uh, the input.